Good morning, everyone. Uh, let me start the class today. Thank you for joining the class. Um, in the previous uh, few classes, uh, we was talking about inter symbol interference. It was caused by uh, skin effect loss, skin effect loss, and dielectric loss. And ISI is creating uh, eye diagram distortion, and eventually it will create jitter uh, problem, and it will ultimately limit the data bandwidth between transmitter and receiver. So in that regard, ISI is uh, one of the um, very important subject of design to improve the data bandwidth between transmitter and receiver. Especially this is for um, digital data, means that it has a random parent nature. Also, I, I was talking about Effect, effect of power supply noise, and it is gonna uh, create another uh, coupling of power and ground noise to make eye diagram distortion. And it will also generate power supplies induced jitter. And this will be the subject of our classes uh, next week and a week after next week. Today, I'm going to talk about equalizer, equalizer and preemphasis. You remember that ISI has a nature of uh, low pass filter. You remember that we're gonna have attenuation at higher frequencies, but equalizer and preemphasis circuit is a kind of high pass filter or high frequency amplifier. So it is gonna uh, compensate ISI effect because ISI has low or low pass filter characteristic while equalizer and preemphasis circuit is a kind of high frequency amplifier or high pass filter characteristics. So combining this ISI and equalizer, we can improve eye diagram and we can possibly reduce the jitter. So, so in, in order to overcome ISI effect and eye diagram distortion, we're gonna introduce new circuit structure that is usually placed at either transmitter or receiver. And I'm today I'm going to give a lecture on equalizer and preemphasis. And uh, we have been talking about many methodologies to improve the data bandwidth, such as differential signaling and uh, PAM4. Uh, but equalizer and preemphasis will be very crucial and essential part of interconnection to improve um, eye diagram and jitter. So this will be a uh, very uh, important and critical subject I'd like to talk with you. Anyway, when you want to design equalizer, you need to know about channel characteristics. Then if you know very well about channel, you can estimate uh, attenuation and injection loss of your channel, then you can optimize equalizer and preemphasis. There are two ways to obtain the channel characteristics. One is modeling 
one approach is modeling and simulation. Second one is the measurement. Um, but uh, it is very difficult to make a measurement uh, test structure because uh, we have, in order to completely measure the channel characteristics, we have to uh, measure from transmitter to receiver. Uh, but if you make a packaging, it is very difficult to make a probing point. So I personally uh, believe and I personally prefer to use modeling and simulation method, including equalizer and preemphasis circuit. So in order to achieve that goals, usually we have to work together, package designers and uh, analyst engineer has to be able to work together with the IO circuit designers. Also, IO circuit designer alone cannot complete uh, interconnections, they have to work together with the packaging engineer. Uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, the interconnection channel. Uh, those are needed for modeling and simulation of whole interconnection channel. Once again, I would like to say that uh, we need to have whole interconnection channels in order to optimize the channel and equalize it together. Number one <clears throat> uh, element is IO circuit and preemphasis circuit. Um, there are many different type of equalizers, but usually at the transmitter side, we are adding preemphasis circuit. Later in this class, I'm going to talk about that. What is the preemphasis? And number two, we have to be able to model interconnection line at package level, a silicon wafer level, because some of traces are needed at the silicon wafer as well. In, in addition to IO circuit and preemphasis, um, to completely model and simulate, we need a complete IO circuit and preemphasis. If you a packaging company and I see companies have the same group, same company, uh, it is e easy to do that. Uh, but um, Sometimes we are using IBIS model to describe the IO circuit and preemphasis while we are keeping the secret of the IO circuit details and layouts. But uh, IBIS may not be a complete uh, circuit description. So there are some struggles between IO circuit design companies and packaging companies. Uh, depending on the leadership and hegemony, uh, some company take a leadership and have all the information. Number three element of channel is package. We have to have all the package routings and vias and power ground plane structures. And we need to have that uh, model. Fourth, uh, element of the channel is PCB uh, traces. And then it has to go back to package the channel and on chip channel and receiver circuit. At the receiver, we sometimes probably necessarily we need an equalizer circuit and terminations and clock recovery circuits like that. So in order to optimize the equalizer design to minimize the eye diagram distortion and to minimize the jitter, we have to be able to model all whole channel from IO circuit with the preemphasis to receiver circuit with the equalizer. Of course, there are some rules associated with uh, from number six to Number, number two to number six. Uh, so far in this class, we was talking a lot 
about the design principles from number two to number six, such as impedance matching and the ground plane uh, placement and also designing the transmission line structures. Uh, also, we need to minimize the plastics from the 3D interconnection structures. Today, I'm going to give more about number one, number seven. And number one, we usually say it is pre-emphasis. And, and number seven, we usually use the equalizer terminology. This is another case of interconnection channel from uh, transmitter to receiver. Um, at the transmitter side, we have IO circuit and pre-emphasis as we have discussed in the previous slide, that is number one element. Number two, also you have to uh, understand the channel element at silicon vapor interconnection. Number three is package level interconnection. Number four is daughter card PCB channel interconnection. Sometimes we are communicating between a card to another card. First card could be memory card and second card could be graphic card. So to have freedom and flexibility of different module into a main server computer, we have this kind of architectures. So that we probably the communication channel between a Doro card to the, the other Doro card could be PCI Express, but there might be many different type of PCB card can be inserted into the main server PCB. Then fourth element of channel are including the connector. And in this class, in this semester, we are not going to go very detail about connector, but usually connector and cables are also very important element of interconnection because it is three dimensional structures with many, many uh, parasitics. Also, in order to have mechanical strength and stability, and uh, it has to have certain mini mechanical requirement of connectors. And usually those requirements are creating the parasitics, inductance and capacitance. And that will change the impedance of transmission line and it will generate deflection. So uh, even though we are not going very deeply into the connector and cables. Connector is also an important element in the high-speed channel. Number six is the main motherboard of PCB traces. Uh, it includes transmission line, via like that. And number seven is connector again. Number eight is PCB traces at card. Number nine is package interconnections. Number 10 is on-chip interconnection. Finally, at 11, we have IO circuit and equalizer. So we have 11 component. And once again, from two to nine, we are not going to spend much time today. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about number one and number 11. At, num at the receiver side, we have an equalizer. At the transmitter side, we have pre emphasis circuit. Um, so in principle, if we can deduce 11 steps to two to three step uh, element, we're gonna have less ISI and less reflections. So in the future, extremely high performance computer will not have this kind of very complicated uh, interconnection structures. So probably we're gonna have very 3D, very tiny, very simple interconnections between transmitter and receiver. But if you wanna have certain flexibilities and freedom to change your systems, um, 
probably you may have more than these 11 numbers to complete the interconnection channels. Uh, once again, I would like to say that if you figure out this whole interconnections, then you sh should be able to extract very high frequency model up to probably in the future 100 gigahertz. And you should be able to do the simulations and probably 10 to 12 to 10 to 14 cases. Uh, this means we have to do the 3D EM simulation to extract the model parameters. So it is going to take a long, long uh, time to uh, extract the channel uh, characteristics. That is engineering challenges. Probably we need very strong and powerful computers to in order to do that. And so these are quite challenges uh, for uh, interconnection designers. Um, now, I'd like to start to talk about the basics of equalizers. Let's assume that we have transmitter that has the frequency dependent function, uh, function, uh, frequency dependent function HT. Let's assume we have a uh, function HT depending on frequencies. Also, let's assume that we have interconnection channel and that channel has transfer function HCW. And then at the receiver side, let's assume that we have a receiver transfer function HRW. As we know that um, channel transfer function has such as high frequency losses. So if we can design transceiver transfer function has certain high frequency gain or high pass filter characteristic, and let's assume that we have some high frequency pass characteristic at the receiver transfer function, by multiplying these three functions, we hopefully to have constant uh, transfer function with a frequency with a function of frequency. So ideal condition, ideal requirement of this whole channel transfer function should be unity over a very, very high frequency. And pl please remember that this is the requirement of transmission line. Please remember that in the transmission line, even though you have different data patterns, phase velocity and impedance was always the same up to very high frequencies, up to probably 100 gigahertz. So if you can make a complete transmission line from transmitter to receiver, that is an ideal case. But once again, I'd like to remind you that because of the channel loss, skin effect and dielectric loss and deflections, this may not be or uh, our realizable, um, that is our dream, but it may not happen in our life. But at this moment, I would like to say that ideal requirement of our channel design and receiver and transmitters design is total transfer function has almost a unity over a very, very high frequency. Eventually it will go down because of the skin effect and dielectric loss and parasitics of your interconnections. 
every metal structures, every transistors, and every uh, metal structures, transistors have plastic capacitance and inductance. Because of that, we're gonna have, we're gonna suffer this high frequency loss. Our engineering effort will move this frequency as high as possible. We have to move. And of course, we have to design less uh, loss at the interconnection. Another possibility is to reduce the length of, of interconnection as short as possible, very, very short. Then we can push this frequency to higher and higher. So now I'd like to uh, summarize this slide. So preemphasis and equalizer circuit is an effort to design transfer function at the transmitter and transfer function at receiver to make almost ideal transfer function from transmitter to receiver. And that is ideal transmission line distance function. This is another way to express the basic concepts of equalizer. We have transmitter and it has transmitter uh, function and we are designing preemphasis circuit at the transmitter, which may have some gains at certain frequency range. This frequency range will be very close to a frequency where dielectric loss appear to start and to become dominant to generate ISI effect and jitter distribution function. How are we making, okay, how do we make this high frequency gain a certain frequency range is shown up here. Original digital waveform has certain type of rectangular function shape, but if we are adding preemphasis circuit at the transmitter, we are generating some ripple, small ripples at each transition. If we have positive transition, we create some ripple. If we have negative transition in NRG pattern, we are creating, we are adding some negative ripples. So, this preemphasis circuit means we are modifying the digital waveform at the transmitter to make some ripples at each edge. And this ripple is creating some high frequency component at certain frequencies. This frequency is, will be depending on the shape of the ripple and the time delay of this ripple pulse width and the height. This, uh, this ripple height will, I think the, the gain at this frequency may be very depending on the height of this ripple and the width of this ripple may be corresponding to responsible for this frequency, which has high frequency gain. So I'd like to uh, remind you that th our channel has high frequency loss around some frequencies. And if we add this ripple at this frequency, this loss will be compensated somehow by this uh, preemphasis circuit. That is the basic uh, nature or basic idea about this uh, preemphasis circuit. Uh, preemphasis circuit is uh, one of the equalizers which 
are usually placed at the transmitter side. Good thing about uh, this preamper C circuit is that uh, we have some gain and this will make some flatter response over a very high frequency range. Maybe we, we would like to push this over 100 gigahertz. But disadvantage of preamper C circuit is that it will consume some power at the receiver side. Power consumption is as important consideration as a data bandwidth between the uh, transmitter and receiver. Here, we are only considering the ISI and eventually jitters, but in the system design, also we have to consider IO power consumption. And this preemphasis circuit will add IO power consumption. Also, because this is a circuit, it will take some area at the IO, uh, IO circuit area. And please remember that in HBM, we have more than 1,000 interconnections. And probably in the future, we're going to have uh, 10,000 or 100,000. And this whole amount of power and area consumed by this preamp process is not negligible. So usually, if you want to achieve high frequency data rate, definitely you have it will use more power and it will increase the cost of your system so once again 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 only way to avoid that kind of burden is to reduce the length of your channel if you have very small length of channel you're gonna have less channel loss and sometimes probably you don't need pre emphasis circuit Also, we can add some high frequency amplifier at the receiver side at certain frequencies. Um, it is, uh, there might be many different type of amplifier circuit at the receiver. Some of that is very similar to analog amplifier. Sometimes it's very similar to RF amplifier because now in gigahertz range over, the barrier between analog circuit and um, the RF circuit is meaningless, almost the same. And sometimes we can, you can design some uh, high frequency amplifier using a digital circuit as well. So there might be many uh, different type of equalizer at the receiver. I would say this is high frequency, high frequency amplifier. So it will uh, add some gain at certain frequencies. So again, equalizer are consuming the power and it will take some area of IO circuit design. So it is not free. You have to pay money to have high frequency gain. Another difficult part of this equalizer is that it has certain frequency uh, limit. If you want to increase to a higher and higher frequencies, it's very, very difficult because of parasitics of your RF and analogs and digital circuits. So the push of this uh, uh, amplifier gain frequency to a higher and higher frequency is also very, very difficult part. So, by combining this uh, preemphasis circuit and equalizer with the channel loss, we want to push this cutoff frequency to higher and higher frequencies. So in summary, I would say that uh, equalizer, equalizer at the receiver has uh, some high pass filter characteristic and sometimes with gain. If you make an equalizer with um, active circuit, it's going to have some gain. So it, sometimes we are using the passive type um, equalizer. Passive type does not have gain, but it has very high frequency 
high frequency pest characteristics sometimes um, it may have some effective solution. So ultimately, the frequency limit of this equalizer is coming from CMOS and interconnection parasitics. These are the overall picture of our class today. Um, uh, let me ask someone, Jiwon, are you there? Thank you. 네, 어, 이 페이지 한번 요약해 보시겠습니까? 어, 일단은 저희가 이제 인터커넥션 채널을 이제 분석함에 있어서 이제 PCB와 PCB 또는 이제 어, 패키지와 패키지 사이의 회로에서 트랜스미터를 시작으로 인터커넥션 채널 그리고 리시버 채널에서의 어, 신호 분석을 해야 하는데 각각의 트랜스미터 채널 리시브의 이제 전달 함수를 각각 이렇게 나타내었을 때 다음과 같은 특성을 보이는데 어, 저희들이 이제 최종적으로 이제 이상적인 채널이 요구하는 전달 함수는 이세 개의 전달 함수의 곱이 이제 1로 일정한 값이 되어야 하는데 이제 채널 구조 내 컨덕터 로스 또는 다이렉트리 로스 레디에이션 로스로 인해서 우주파 대역에서는 최종 전달 함수가 일정하지 않고 저감되는 모습을 보이게 됩니다. 그런데 저희가 이제 회로 분석을 함에 있어서 어, 이 일정한 구간을 이제 추후면은 최대 100GHz까지 높이게 되는데 이를 해줄 수 있는 게 이제 프리 앰프티스와 이퀄라이즈를 이용함으로써입니다. 네, 좋습니다. 그리고 프리앰퍼시스나 이퀄라이저나 방법은 뭐 수없는 방법이 있을 수 있지만 하이 프리퀀시 대학의 개인을 좀 만들어 주겠다. 아, 이런 게 되겠습니다. 네, 감사합니다. 음, this is my suggestion to uh, design the equalizer design process. Number one, what I believe is that we sh should have a uh, channel design and either we can obtain that using the simulation and by combining the uh, 3D electromagnetic simulation and circuit simulation together, sometimes we can do the measurement. Second uh, uh, process, in this design process is that we have to do the channel estimation including pre and process and equalizer and then to compete so with give with with the channel performance the characteristic we can design equalizer and we have to design the parameters such as the gain and frequencies so there might be many different parameters when we are designing pre and person equalizer. And fourth step, we have to do the verification. In the verification, either we can observe the transfer function using S parameters, or we can do the I diagram simulation and we can obtain we can obtain the jitter and ber so these are the observation point and through this observation analysis we can verify at the design if the design is not uh, meeting the specification we have sometimes we have to go back to the channel design again or sometimes we have to go back to the equalizer design and once we complete this verification we have to move on to the next step that is manufacturing and finally after the manufacturing you, we have to do the measurement and system verification i think this is um, the overall process of equalizer design and sometimes during the design optimization, uh, we can use the experience 
or manual manual optimization but sometimes we can use the genetic algorithm or machine learning method especially our laboratory students are working on machine learning method to optimize the equalization and channel design i think these are the sequences of equalizer design process let's uh, go back to the isi again you may now you may be very familiar with this isi concept but let's come back revisit the isi uh, again because preemphasis and equalizer circuit is to design to compensate this intersymbol interference ideal data pattern has very stiff uh, transition and there is no ringing so we're gonna have 0 1 0 1 0 1 level something like that but at the this, this is the waveform at the transmitter but at the receiver because of isi we're gonna have uh, this kind of uh, waveform this ideal waveform will have different shape at the receiver because of high frequency loss when obvious penalty uh, related to this uh, high frequency loss is that voltage margin will be reduced so it is very difficult to uh, have uh, maintain certain voltage margin at the receiver side so this is one of the effect of intersymbol interference now let's talk about the I, uh, in preemphasis so in the preemphasis at the transmitter we are designing preemphasis circuit and it has certain ripple and the height of the ripple is described as delta v here and the height the width of time delta t is ripple is delta t and at the negative transition we're gonna have negative ripple and positive transition we're gonna have ripple and like that let's assume that this yellow line is an ideal transfer function which is unity over very very high frequencies and let's assume that this black line is the original uh, channel of characteristics and then it's gonna have a preemphasis uh, fre frequency component so by combining this blue and purple line we're gonna have almost unity over very frequency so um, in the case of preemphasis uh, circuit at the, tra the transmitter side you have to design this ripple circuit i think it is not very difficult probably you may have certain uh, signal path and you may have another path and you add them together and this second path may create the uh, ripples at each transitions and this main ripple has the distal waveform by combining these two uh, different uh, voltage waveform at the two different paths you can have this kind of rippled waveform in the future also this kind of clear form might be not easy to have so we may have some dingings and dingings and this kind of waveform might be more real waveform and this kind of small ringing sometimes may help to add some high frequency component at the high frequency area so 
there might be many different type of variations at the pre-emphasis circuit design. So um, without at the receiver side, at the receiver side, without pre-emphasis, it may have uh, high frequency loss and it is going to create the intersymbol interference. But if we are having a pre-emphasis circuit, we're gonna have some extended frequencies to have more unity a frequent uh, data transfer function. So the, the functionality of preamper circuit is to add this high frequency element. That is the purpose of preamper circuit at the transmitter side. This is the eye diagram description of pre-emphasis circuit. Let's assume that we have digital data waveform eye diagram at the transmitter side. So we're gonna ha we have very good voltage and timing opening, and we may have very uh, small uh, jitter. Let's assume that we are obtaining this eye diagram waveform at the transmitter. Either you can do the simulation or you can do the um, measurement. But if you are sending this kind of digital data to the receiver because of ISI, you may have eye diagram at the receiver side So one obvious uh, observation we're gonna have is that reduced voltage and timing margin. And also we're gonna see deterministic jitter, very clear distribution of deterministic jitter. So usually we have this kind of separation of this jitter distribution function uh, was called as deterministic jitter. You remember that the tail is described by a random jitter. So this is what are actually happening in the case of uh, channel design with the equalizer. So we cannot avoid the effect of ISI. However, if we are adding pre-emphasis circuit at the transmitter, at the transmitter side, we're gonna have ripple. And in the negative transition, also we're gonna have ripple. So I diagram shape will be a little bit different than conventional type. If you add pre-emphasis circuit, your I diagram at the transmitter side will change to this kind of waveform. That means you're gonna have some ripples at each transition. So I diagram, if you obtain the I diagram uh, using the simulation or measurement, you're gonna see this kind of waveform. Interesting thing is that because of pre-emphasis, probably you're gonna add some jitter here. So what I'm saying is that you're gonna have some jitter, deterministic jitter. Here, original waveform, you do not have, have the deterministic jitter because you are just measuring at the transmitter side. And this random jitter is totally probably related to your clock generation circuit and IO circuit. If you have some power supply noise issue at the transmitter side, you may have some uh, deterministic jitter. But uh, at this moment, we are not assuming that we are assuming that you have very uh, small um, determinist jitter and you only have random jitter. But if you add pre emphasis circuit, you're gonna have some ripple and you're gonna add some deterministic jitter because of this pre emphasis circuit. 
But however, at the receiver side, this ripple will disappear because of uh, channel loss, because high frequency component will uh, disappear because of this uh, high frequency loss of the channel. So it's gonna have very clear eye diagram patterns. And in this case, hopefully we're gonna have only random jitter and we have small jitter and we may have large uh, eye mask window with wider voltage uh, range and timing window range. Uh, Junyoung, are you there? Mm -hmm. uh, would you shortly uh, explain this eye diagram when we are using pre emphasis circuit? In conclusion, if we look at the eye diagram at the receiver side, receiver side eye diagram, without preemphasis, we have smaller eye window and large determinist jitter. Hopefully, by using the preemphasis circuit, we're going to have larger eye opening and smaller jitter. Uh, that, is the that is the main story of pre-emphasis design. As I mentioned before, uh, we may have two different pathways when we are designing pre-emphasis circuit. The first path is the main path who is having the main digital function. We may have second path, V2, that is adding ripple. By adding this main, uh, main digital waveform and apple, we can uh, generate um, pre-emphasized digital transition. So by controlling this uh, delay one and pulse width controller, delay two and pulse width controller, uh, we can design this high frequency element. So we can design this ripple frequency ranges to optimize the preemphasis circuit with a given uh, channel so that we can maximize the eye opening and we can minimize the jitters. Another type of uh, equalizer that is placed at the receiver side is usually called equalizer. There might be many different types of equalizers, but this might be very typical one. It, you may receive digital waveform at the receiver side, but this is the ideal one, but actual one is something like that. And then you have gain. This is amplifier at certain frequencies, F1. So you have to design uh, who has certain gains at certain frequencies. A second step, second stage, sec in the second path, you have different gain two and at frequency F2. At path three at the receiver, 
you have a, a number three gains at frequency F3. So when you are optimizing the equalizers at the receiver, you have to control this gain one, two, three, and frequency one, two, three. Let's assume that we have gain one curve of amplifier and gain two of amplifier and gain three of amplifiers. And if you add them together, you can design certain uh, gain characteristic functions. So it is actually our design target. Probably your channel function or uh, transfer function may have this kind of waveform. And by combining these two, you may have some certain extended uh, flat area up to very high frequency. So in some receiver circuit, they are many monitoring and some, some receiver circuit, they are monitoring the eye diagram opening and they are, uh, they are adaptively controlled. That may not be easy to do that very high, at high frequencies, but an adaptability can be included in equalizer design. Optimization is done during the design process uh, using uh, many different uh, optimization methodologies. We can use that. And adaptivity could be inserted because this whole circuit and controller uh, may have some digital control circuit and monitoring circuit, eye monitoring circuit, then uh, it can adaptively control the gain and frequency one to three to optimize uh, your total gain function. And then you can maximize the eye opening with minimal jitter. So this equalizer may have certain uh, frequency parameters, F1 and F2 and F3. Of course, you can add more stages up to uh, gain N. Um, but the penalty, uh, which is coming from this equalizer design with a very detailed design is the cost and power. We may have some different requirement of bandwidth, but always we have some penalty of cost and power. So between them, we have to uh, make the equalizer design. So this is the overall uh, nature of equalizer design. Once again, if I draw it in this figure, we may have channel loss at higher frequencies and we can design this equalizer transfer function and eventually we can achieve a little bit flatter up to a high frequency. This is our final transfer function. So frequency range was extended from F1 to F2. I'd like to summarize my class right now at this moment. ISI is very important uh, uh, element when we are realizing very high speed channel, it has high frequency loss. And in order to overcome this, we are uh, placing pre-emphasis circuit and equalizer, it is usually uh, active circuit, so we're gonna have some gain and we eventually we wanna have a very flat distance over a very high frequency range. And I personally believe that this pre-emphasis and equalizer is as important as interconnections. They have to work together to make an ideal transmission line property. Um, 
there are two different type of equalizer. One is active equalizer, which I we was talking so far in this class. The advantage has it has gain. Definitely, it is good to have gain, uh, but it takes uh, power consumption and it has frequency limit because of plastics of your RF circuit and analog circuit. Another type of equalizer is passive equalizer. It is a kind of high pass filter. One typical uh, circuit structure of this high uh, pass filter is shown up here. We have shunt inductance so that low frequency component will go to this ground. And we have series capacitance, that means high frequency element will go through this capacitance. So uh, there are also in different, uh, we may have different types of uh, passive equalizer. This is lumped type equalizer. Also, we can have some distributed uh, high pass filter. This kind of filter pattern is coming from microwave circuit. Uh, usually uh, this kind of periodic structure with the coupling coefficient by combining this transmission line with some coupled coefficient with the given length. Usually depending on length of this interconnection, we can have some high frequency uh, 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 element, then we can achieve that uh, passive equalizer property. But the problem is that always passive device has loss, that means this gain has less than zero dB. So at, in these days, what I'm believing is that we can combining passive equalizer with the active equalizer, or we can probably can achieve very ideal equalizer design. Uh, this is the first end of the first part of the class. Let me move on to the uh, another slide set and please stay at the class. This is PowerPoint format. Um, yes, we have a uh, transmitter and receiver. At the transmitter, we have uh, equalizer and, and in this class I was talking about this was uh, pre-emphasis circuit then we have a channel channel has a PCB and cable and connectors also at the receiver side we have equalizer and it has clock receiver circuit so in the frequency domain analysis uh, we want to design or circuit at the receiver side, which has some high frequency gain. At the transmitter and receiver side, we wanna achieve the constant gain over a very frequent, wide frequency range. Then we should be able to achieve certain eye opening at the receiver side. And this kind of equalizer circuit is very common to high speed link uh, such as HDMI, CDR, ATA, USB, PCI Express. Right now in DRAM channel, between DRAM and GPU and DRAM and CPU, because um, DRAM system is very sensitive to cost and power consumption, then we do not have this kind of equalizer uh, right now, but sooner or later, a DRAM channel also will use this kind of equalizer and PAM4 multi-level signaling scheme. And at the, especially at the transmitter side, we are adding a pre-emphasis circuit. Uh, the, one of the reasons I'm uh, bringing up this uh, slide is to show you the measurement waveform. About 20 years ago, actually I did the measurement and, and I wanna show you real measurement uh, waveform. Uh, at with preemphasis with preemphasis circuit equalizer, you can see that there are ripples. At this is the measured waveform at the transmitter side. Long, long time ago, you can see that there is a, some ripple 
at each transition. So this is actually output waveform uh, at the transmitter side with preemphasis circuit. Also, I measured the waveform at the receiver side. And you see that this ripple is gone at the receiver side because of ISI, we are suffering some smoothening of rising time and distal waveform. So the ripple is gone, but because of this ripple, we still have some uh, good uh, fast rising time here. Probably if we do not have this ripple, this rising time will be slowed down quite a lot. So number one, thing I would like to show you at this moment is that I did measure and with the ripple we have very good smooth rising time that is the first thing I would like to show you in this slide second observation what I'd like to say is that if the data pattern has high frequency data pattern a high frequency data pattern means that the data pattern is changing from zero to one, one to zero, and zero to one. At every unit cycle, it is changing their logic level zero to high, high to low. So that means it this data pattern has very, very high frequency component. In those cases, at the receiver side, height of this voltage level will be quite significantly reduced compared to this slowly uh, moving data. This, uh, this voltage reduction and a timing window reduction was caused by ISI. So number two observation here is that in this uh, channel, it is suffering the ISI and this this waveform at the receiver side with the very rapidly changing data pattern has quite smaller voltage margin at the receiver side. However, if the TX data pattern has low frequency a component like here, it has very slowly data uh, changing data pattern 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, something like that. At the receiver side, it has full voltage swing. It, does, it has less ISI effect. So number two statement in this measurement to you is that this is the measurement of, of verification of ISI effect. And ISI effect is strongly affected by data patterns. High frequency component of data pattern are suffering more attenuation than the low frequency component data pattern. Be by combining this pre, uh, pre emphasis and this ISI uh, at the receiver side, we are measured the I diagram and reasonably good eye opening was achieved. But still, you can see there are two distinctive uh, lines. That means we have deterministic jitters. Ji Hoon, are you there? Junsang, are you there? Probably there is. Ah, ah, 네. 네, 네. 네, 네. 안녕하세요. 네. 아, 지훈인가요? 아, 저, 준상입니다. 아, 준상이 이 그래프에서 내가 얘기하고자 했던 말을 한번 얘기해 볼래요? 아. 음. 네. 어, 이 그. <웃음> 제가 대신 얘기해 볼까요? 네. 뭐, 아, 아, 예, 예. 아까 얘기한 것처럼 이 프리앰프시스가 실제로 측정이 되더라 TX에서 이 프리앰프시스가 있으니까 그래도 라이징 타임이 잘 올라가는 거예요. 프리앰프시스 없으면 팍 죽어 버리는데 두 번째는 데이터 패턴에 따라서 리시버 사이드에서 볼티지가 달라지더라. 예. 그게 하이 프리퀀시가 빨리 되는 거고, 예. 로 프리퀀시는 잘 되고. 이런 하이 프리퀀시와 로 프리퀀시 이 차이 때문에 여기서 아이 다이어그램에서 두 개의 라인이 보이고 
그게 디터민 지터다. 뭐 이런 얘기입니다. 네. 아 예, 감사합니다. 드리겠습니다. 네. 그래서 제가 이걸 보여주는 이유는 아 이퀄라이저 아까 그 이론 기본 개념을 열심히 슬라이드 설명하긴 했는데 뭔가 좀 버벅거리는 것 같고 재미도 없는 것 같은데 한번 이렇게 실제로 측정 내가 십몇 년 전이었던 것 같아요. 예. 네. 아. 그렇죠. 근데 그게 아마 HDMI 아니었나 내가 기억하는데. 하여튼 지금 어... 1.0이나 1.2나 근데 하여튼 이런 회로들이 요즘도 다 들어갑니다. 예, 감사합니다, 교수님. 네. 어, also in our lab, we design some passive equalizer pattern. Uh, we obtain this idea from microwave circuit design uh, class. Um, this small uh, transmission line structure. This, uh, this one, two, these are the main transmission line uh, of coplanar waveguide signal, ground, and ground. And by adding this uh, high frequency, high pass filter uh, characteristic by controlling the length of these lines, we was able to uh, design high pass uh, characteristic of uh, this passive structure. And without this, uh, passive inter uh, equalizer, I diagram was completely closed at the receiver side. And please take a look at, it was measured at 30 giga BPS. It is extremely high frequencies. And by having this uh, passive equalizer, we was able to have some eye openings. Here on the left side, zero is almost infinite. On the right side, the jitter was less than uh, 11 picosecond at 30 gigabps. But please uh, pay attention to that because this is passive time, we, they do not have gain. So voltage level is reduced around the reference line. In the middle, we have reference level and around them, we have differential signaling is uh, transmitted and we, are, we, we were measuring the eye diagram. So because this is passive equalizer, we do not have gain, but by adding this high pass filter characteristic, we was able to have some eye opening. So depending on different equalizer and different uh, interconnection, sometimes we have uh, only random uh, jitter. Sometimes we have moderate amount of jitter. I think uh, this original eye pattern was okay. And this is good at the receiver side, but without equalizer, we have very huge amount of jitter. You see that uh, there are multiple lines and that means we have multiple uh, sources of deterministic jitter. So this is one of the measurement results. Um, this is the end of the class today. Um, equalizer in parenthesis is very important circuit element when we are designing interconnections. Um, but I do not want to go very deeply into the analog circuit design. But overall, I, I was trying to give you overall picture of the equalizer design. From next week, I'm going to talk about power supply design. Uh, at least for two weeks, I'm going to give you the very detailed uh, uh, principles and examples of power supply design. I would say the importance of power design is maybe three times more important than signal design. Ground de design might be 10 times more important than signal design. So next two weeks, uh, even though you have a lot of homeworks and uh, uh, researches, let's enjoy the class next Monday and Wednesday. Thank you for your kind of attention. See you next Monday. 다음 주부터는 파워 그라운드 쪽 특히 파워 네트워크 할 거고요. 어, 파워 서플라이는 제가 회로 책이나 뭐 VLSI 서킷 책 어디서도 본 적이 없는 것 같아요. 파워는 아이디어를 한다고 보는데 실제로는 파워가 그렇지 않기 때문에 어떻게 디자인돼야 되는가 또그 파워 서킷이 지터하고 어떤 관련이 되는가를 계속 해보도록 하겠습니다. 어, 오늘 강의, 어, 오늘, 이번 주 강의도 지터 입장에서 되게 중요했는데 앞으로 두 강의 시간에는 여러분들 학교에 나오시면 꼭 강의 슬라이드 켜놓으시고 쭉 들어보시면 좋겠습니다. 여러분 감사합니다. 이상 마치겠습니다. 수고하셨습니다.